How to rack your brew. Now, first, what is racking? Racking is literally the idea that you move the liquid from one vessel to another vessel. Now, that can be accomplished in a multitude of ways. The least effective is pouring, okay? Because you can oxygenate. We talk about that in a lot of our other videos. I'm trying to keep this short. The most effective is a siphon. Now, there's a lot of different ways to do a siphon. You can just grab two tubes, fill one, fill it with liquid, and put one end in, and that'll work too. We like the auto siphon because it lets you start the siphon very easily, okay? But the basics of siphoning are this. First, you need a vessel that has liquid in it. This one just happens to be my basic beginner's mead that we added some French oak to. And it smells lovely, by the way. Then you need some form of elevation. Now, sometimes in the videos, we put one up here and one down on the seat next to us, but I want you guys to be able to see this. So we're bringing back an old favorite. <laughs> the paint can. It's probably the same paint can. Actually, no, no. it's not. This, whoa, it's a different paint can. This, Unbelievable. This one has actually been open. The old paint can alas, still is unopened, and our living room is still unpainted, but that's okay. <laughs> Don't ask why. It's probably because of making all these videos, but you know. <laughs> okay, so the reason for this is you want the bottom of this to be higher than what you perceive the top of this one to be. What I mean by that is, see about where the line is here? You're going to lose a little bit. So on this vessel, it'll probably be just a touch lower, but the bottom is here to there, close enough it should be just fine if this was lower the siphon would actually stop at some point because the equilibrium it just wouldn't allow it to happen going higher makes it go faster which is sometimes good not always if you're doing five gallons some people put it up on the counter or a table and the other one on the floor and it makes it go much much faster for the sake of this we're doing it right here so you can see everything now the auto siphon comes with a few pieces you have tubing you have a racking cane with a little seal on the end here. And then you have the tube itself, and there's a cap on the end. Now, there's a little bit of stuff in the bottom there, so I'm going to leave the cap on. If it was mostly clean and I really just had to get the oak out, well, I probably wouldn't siphon at that point. I'd just remove the oak. But if there was other things in there that I didn't want that were large, I might just leave, the, leave it off and that's fine. But for this one, we're going to leave it on. You put that all the way in to the bottom. That's important because if you don't put it all the way to the bottom, it could splash and that could oxygenate. Again, not necessarily a great thing to do. This end, I'm just going to put it in and I go about halfway down. See it? It's right in here. You want to be very careful. And now just get your siphon started. Our seals are a little dry today, but I got it. Once you see that it's fully going, it only takes two or three pumps. And it usually works just fine. I'm going to lower this very carefully so that I don't have to hold it the whole time. Just like that. Now you want to make sure that it doesn't move around. Let it sit just like it is until you get close to the end. We'll show you that in a moment. So the reasons why you would want to rack is one, during initial primary where you have large chunks of fruit, for example, and you don't want your beverage to sit on that any longer. If the fruit have given up the ghost, they're done with their job. Spices too. Spices too, because spices can be over extracted and that's bad as well. And that would be a good time to rack. Now, if you want your fermentation to continue at that point, it's a good idea to give your beverage a swirl before racking, so that way all the colony, which may have settled to the bottom, can be reintroduced into the liquid and moved into your secondary um, fermenter. We call that a rough rack, when you keep all the lease. So basically, you get everything moving, all the lease would be up off the bottom, and then you rack it just like you would normally, but the fruit gets left behind, just the least goes. You only need to do that if you're using fruit or large spices. Another reason to rack is when fermentation is done and everything has settled to the bottom and you want to move it from that lease. Then do not stir. Be very careful. You don't want to agitate anything like we're doing right now. So that way you end up with a crystal clear beverage in your next fermentation yeah. vessel. As you get close to the bottom, you want to put it up on its edge like this very carefully because that keeps extra liquid over your siphon. That way you get a little bit more out. If you just let it go to the bottom, you're going to lose quite a bit, like a cup or more. 
By doing it this way, I only lose very little, a few tablespoons really. But you have to be very careful because the leaves will start to move around and things like that. You don't want all that gunk. That's the whole point in racking. Now, if you do suck up gunk, you can just let it sit for a while and rack it again. No big deal. Or next time, rack more carefully. You see how much slower it's going now? It's because we're very close in level. If I was to lift this up, just hold it up a little higher, it'll actually start to go a lot faster. That gets kind of hard to do, you know, especially if you had like a five gallon fermenter or something. <laughs> I wouldn't want to hold a five. Although there, there's your arm workout for the day. And we're almost done. You'll see it'll do this thing. We are sucking up a little bit of cloudy lease at the bottom, and I'm okay with that. You might be able to see it down here. Gets a little bit wispy. That's okay. We didn't lose much at all, by the way. Like, literally, what's that, two tablespoons of liquid? No big deal. And now, this has been racked. So, because I want this to clear out a, a little bit more on its own, we're just going to stick a lid back on it, put an airlock on it. It's going to go back on the shelf until we're ready. But that is the basics of racking. If you have any questions on how to rack or when you should rack or why you should rack or basically anything about racking, ask in the comments below. We'll be happy to help you out. If you like this video, look up! There's another one you might like equally as well. Thanks for watching.